to start by, by talking about your backgrounds because you have very different skill sets. Dimitri, you've been in the self-driving industry for two decades. Takedra, you started off as a lawyer, then worked your way through policy and operations jobs in tech. Um, history tells us co-CEO scenarios don't often work. Takedra, why do you think it'll work this time? Thanks so much, Emily. I think in this case, Waymo is a unique company and we are tackling, as the segment just suggested, a very new industry with a nascent technology. And so having these complementary skill sets where technology is always gonna be at the core of our operations, of our engagement with the policy landscape. And Dimitri and I now have the benefit of the last four years being deeply engaged on all of the strategic decisions working side by side. So it's really set us up well to work together and to be in this position as co-CEOs. Now, Dimitri, some people don't realize that you can go to Phoenix right now and hail a self-driving Waymo and it'll take you where you want to go. I know you're always testing these crazy scenarios on your test track in terms of where the technology goes next. You know, where does Waymo take us next? When will I be able to you know, buy a self-driving Waymo myself? Well, Emily, uh, we have, as you mentioned, uh, deployed a fully autonomous uh, ride hailing service in Phoenix, and that's how people can experience our technology today. You can just download an app, uh, call a car, it shows up with no human behind the wheel, it takes you anywhere. And that's the deployment that we're going to pursue uh, first uh, as in a ride hailing business. And then we have plans to expand that core capability uh, that we build of, uh, uh, of the Waymo driver to other commercial applications like trucking deliveries. And eventually we will get to what we refer to as the personal car ownership. So Takedra, on that note, do you plan to sell services direct to consumer and, and if so, when, or is it gonna be more like a package service to cities and municipalities? Yes, we're definitely going direct to consumer. So as Dimitri just said, we have two sides to our business currently. We have Waymo One, which is where we move people, and we have Waymo Via, which is where we're moving goods. And so for Waymo One, our ride hailing service that's available right now today in Phoenix is direct to consumer. You download the app, you hail a ride, you go from point A to point B, it's a rider only experience. There is no driver in the car or behind the wheel at all. And that's really important because I think there's sort of an, a lack of understanding that that service is a service, it's commercialized, people are paying for it and they're excited about it. On the Waymo Via side, we will have class eight trucks um, that are currently going between Tucson and Texas as well as local delivery where we've already entered into partnerships for B2B parcel and part trans, uh, uh, transmission for AutoNation as well as UPS. Now, you know, you talked about a lot of things there, you know, everything from robo taxis to driverless vans to driverless trucking. And I wonder, um, Dimitri, why focus on all of those things at once and now? Why is that the best approach in your view? Well, Emily, uh, we spend years advancing the core capabilities of our technology and the core capabilities of the Waymo driver. Uh, we have now reached that level of maturity of that technology and that product that we have it deployed in that fully autonomous uh, ride hailing business in Phoenix. Um, but you know, looking at other product uh, applications of our driver and uh, other commercial lines, while there is some spe specialization when you go from ride hailing to trucking to local deliveries, the core fundamentals of what it means to be a good driver carry over really well from one product to another. And the sensors, the software, and all of the AI and machine learning for understanding the world around you, for predicting the behavior of others, for making safe and natural driving decisions, you know, as well as all of that machinery under the hood, the infrastructure, the simulation, the data science, uh, all of that carries over really, really well. And that's what will allow us to move really fast in other uh, commercial applications as well. So I'm confident in that technical foundation that we have developed uh, over the years that uh, will enable us to deploy the Waymo driver uh, beyond right hailing. Now, 
I actually had a chance to ride it in a, it was then Google, self-driving car 10 years ago, and I will never forget it. And certainly uh, the technology has changed so much since then. As you mentioned to Kedra, Waymo's approach now is no driver at the wheel. You don't need the attention uh, of a human driver. Whereas other companies like Tesla, uh, you know, offer more driver assisted technology. With Tesla fully self-driving beta, you know, you know, just around the corner, I'm curious if you're doubling down, if you would double down on that philosophy and, and if you think that Tesla is going about it the wrong way. Yeah, you know, the um, what we've learned with um, driver assist technologies is you really need to have a fully attentive human who has a driver's license and who is able to take over if the technology fails or needs human assistance. With Waymo, we're a fully autonomous technology company and we're only focused on the level of autonomy needed for no human intervention. And we think that's really important for a few reasons. One, if you believe the NHTSA statistics around the amount of human error involved in the crashes today, 94%, then you know that that's actually how you tackle creating safer roads, which ultimately is our mission. Secondly, we also know that consumers are confused. Consumers need to understand the capabilities and limitations of the technology they're using. And so when you say you can get into a Waymo, the Waymo driver will do the driving task. You don't have to take over. In fact, in Phoenix, you're not even in the front row. So you don't need a driver's license. You can be someone old enough to drive who can't qualify for one. And we're excited about the mobility and access that this kind of technology would unleash for people who can't drive. So on that note, since you say consumers are confused, there was just this deadly crash involving a Tesla. Two people died in Texas. We are still getting more details, but Dimitri, you know, as somebody who's been in this industry for a really long time, when you heard that story, what was your reaction? Also, it's tragic uh, because uh, avoiding these kinds of uh, tragedies is at the core of our mission. And we want to leverage this technology to uh, improve the safety of uh, transportation. That is why I and many other people at Waymo are here. So uh, and, you know, it, it is tragic and you know, it causes us to double down on the work that we are doing on building our driver that you know, is responsible for the entire uh, task of driving beginning to end so that there is no confusion of you know, who is in control. Now, Takedra, I, I spoke with Ruth Porat earlier this week around earnings. We talked about your transition uh, to becoming co-CEO. She said you're both superb. Um, from the outside, I know folks in the industry thought it was a little bit of an abrupt announcement. It came out on, on Good Friday. Um, can you tell us any more about the circumstances surrounding John Kraftchik's departure and if this succession was planned? Yes, yeah, so you know, John had over four decades in this industry. He really put his heart and soul into the automotive industry and at Waymo in improving road safety. And he just made a personal decision that he was ready to go and do something else in the short term, travel with his wife. Um, and then he said, you know, stay tuned for what else they may do. But he published a blog on that and uh, it was all in his own words. So this was really a decision that John made and we're excited that he's decided to stay on as an advisor. So we'll get to work with him in that capacity. Meantime, there are continuing questions about how and when Waymo will make money. Um, Silver Lake just uh, led a big cash injection into Waymo 3.25 billion dollars. Um, Dimitri, are we gonna see more external funding rounds like this, or will the support come more directly from Alphabet? Well, Emily, uh, we did have a very significant uh, round last year that included both uh, Alphabet and external investors. And, you know, going forward, we are open to, you know, having the same sort of conversations with, uh, you know, parties beyond Alphabet. So, Takedra, you know, how would you characterize the support of, of Alphabet at this point and the desire for Waymo to make money? And when do you see Waymo making money? 
So the support from Alphabet has been tremendous. Um, as Dimitri said, this is a hard challenge, uh, building the Waymo driver to be fully autonomous and doing it safely and taking the iterative approach that we've decided to take. So we really emphasize sort of how do you roll this technology out the first time and get it right? And so that we have a lot of support for that approach. We believe that that's actually how you ultimately capture the value of all of the work over the past 11 years and over 20 million miles on public roads and 20 million in simulation. It's by doing it in a way that um, preserves the opportunity in the long run. And so safety is the core of how we proceed and we don't feel any pressure to um, divert from that approach. As uh, my colleague Ed pointed out earlier, um, Dimitri, we've seen a wave of consolidation in this business. And I'm curious, are we gonna see Waymo make acquisitions as well? Is there anywhere in terms of technology or talent that you believe Waymo is lacking where, where you would like to bring that in? Uh, well, yeah, and it, it's, uh, you know, first of all, it's very exciting to see all of this activity that's happening in the AV industry. Uh, but in terms of consolidation, as we just uh, mentioned, uh, building and deploying a fully autonomous system is a really, really hard problem. And, you know, it also has this property that is very easy to get started. And, and it's also very easy to get excited about the early progress uh, you're making. But the more deeply you engage, the more deeply you understand the problem, the more you realize just how hard the task is. So given all that, it's you know, not surprising that we saw a number of parallel efforts spring up, uh, but now we're seeing, and you know, we'll likely uh, continue to see some more consolidation uh, in the industry. And you know, from the Waymo perspective, we have uh, done some targeted uh, acquisitions in the past, and then you know, we will continue to keep an eye out for what's happening in the industry. Now, Takedra, how aggressively is Waymo engaging with state, government, local regulators to allow a wider deployment of fleets? You know, where will the next Phoenix be? So Waymo's been engaging with uh, state, local, and national government officials on how best to deploy this technology for years. And um, in Arizona, it was really exciting because Governor Ducey started out sort of enabling the technology path through an executive order. And this year we saw the Arizona legislature pass a bill um, that actually codified that. And so I think there are a few states that are taking the lead. They're taking the lead because they have an interest in actually solving some of their own mobility challenges. They can look down the road and see that this technology would be useful for their use cases. And so we're deeply engaged at every level of government. And one of the things that's great is transportation innovation is a largely bipartisan issue. People recognize that this is an opportunity for the US to lead globally. And so it enjoys support on both sides of the aisle. So, you know, obviously I know the, the Chrysler Pacifica is one of your big vehicles and having a large family myself, Dimitri, you know, when will I be able to hail a Pacifica or you know, buy one myself and have it take my family to Tahoe. You know, give me a time, give me a number, a number of years. As I mentioned, uh, we have started the deployment of the Waymo driver in Phoenix. Uh, people who live there can already do that today. Uh, we are working on uh, advancing the technology to uh, scale up and take uh, uh, our right hailing business to more places and more people. And uh, there's a lot of work happening uh, towards that end. In particular, we are now switching to the fifth generation uh, driver that is by far the most capable and the and most advanced system that we have uh, built to date. Uh, that uh, that's true, you know, both on the hardware and the software side. And you know, that system is designed to operate everywhere. Uh, it is uh, built to work in harsh weather conditions like rain and snow. It is uh, built to provide the capability of driving in dense urban environments. So that's the platform upon which we're going to go to scale. So I'm not uh, 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 ready to share any specific timelines, uh, you know, especially when it comes to Tahoe today, um, but that's what we're working on and uh, stay tuned.